everybody. Let's talk about the natural response of a series RLC circuit. So that's where we have, for example, a voltage source connected to a resistor, inductor, capacitor, all in series for a long time. And then we suddenly just short this out, just deactivate it. Okay, so before that, when it's like this for a long time, what's happening here at the inductor? Let me label these. Okay, so at the inductor, the voltage across here would look something like this. So after a long time, the current going around here will be constant. So then look, the time derivative of a constant would be zero. So after a long time, the voltage across here is zero, which means it's like a short circuit. It behaves like a wire. So then you have voltage across here and then across here. So basically you're charging up the capacitor and it stores energy. So then when you short this out, de dis deactivate the voltage source, then that's going to be a natural response. And then what happens from this point? Okay, so. Okay, so then we can go KVL around this loop. So what's the voltage here, here, here? All right, so KVL, so voltage across the resistor, IR voltage across the inductor, L, DI, DT, voltage across the capacitor. Mm, I know the current across going, I know the current going through the capacitor. It looks like this, but then I wanted the voltage so we can move C over here and then do separation of variables like this, right? Because it used to look like this. Move DT on this side, then we can integrate. So then this becomes V minus V naught, right? So then move V naught on this side of the equation. Okay, so then this is the voltage across the capacitor, which I'll write over here. Okay, so there we go, there's KVL. And I would like to not have this integral over here. So let's take a derivative, a time derivative of the entire equation. So time derivative of the entire equation. So then we have, instead of I, I dot. Okay, so I dot looks like this, but if you feel uncomfortable having lowercase I with the dot above it, I can just change the letter. So um, I dot R plus L, and then this would be the second derivative. So I double dot, the derivative of a constant is zero. And then one over C, the derivative of the integral, those are inverses, right? So just I, okay. And then I can write them in decreasing order. So I'll write this one first, and then this one, and then this one. Okay, and then how about I divide through by that leading coefficient, like that. And then let me move this over a little bit. Okay, and then see R over L, I'm gonna factor a two. So there's two over two, same thing, right? But see R over two L, let's call that alpha, the Nieper frequency. And one over LC, I'll say that's omega naught squared. So that means we have something that looks like this. Two alpha I dot plus omega naught squared I equals zero for Nieper frequency alpha R over 2L and the undamped natural frequency, one over one over LC and the square root of that. 
Okay, so this looks familiar, right? You know how to solve a homogeneous second order ODE with constant coefficients. Look back at the video for the parallel RLC, and it's the same form of an equation, which you know how to solve. The difference is for the parallel RLC, this Nieper frequency was different. And it's not about memorizing like this goes with this. That's not really the point. The point is you know the method to get from here, right? We did KVL and then just did a little bit of work and got to our second order ODE. That's the point, right? And then whatever is sitting here became alpha. Okay, and then you just look back, you know how to solve this, right? It just depends on, um, we have the characteristic equation, which will look something like this. And then the roots of the characteristic equation, right? Use the quadratic formula. Looks like this. Which means there are two roots, but then it depends on which of these is larger, alpha or omega. So when alpha is larger than omega, that's overdamped. And so the solution for the current looks like this. Okay, so we're um, for the two roots being exactly like this. And then the other one, oh, there should be a minus. Okay, and then there are these two unknown coefficients. And then you know how to solve for those coefficients, right? You need to use the initial conditions. So we would need to know the voltage at t equal to zero and the current at t equal to zero. Okay, so um, then right, you go i at t equal to zero. So you plug t equal to zero over here. And then this has to be known, the current at t equal to zero. And then you use, you go di by dt. So take a derivative of this and then at t equal to zero, right? And then just take that time derivative and it goes right here. And then you have two equations for two unknowns. And then um, one last thing for the Okay, multiple choice. It's either for the capacitor or for the inductor. Which of these looks like it'll be useful if we're looking for this information? This one, right? Because here, here is that di dt. So for the inductor, we need the voltage across the inductor at t equal to zero. Right, so, so not this one. That's not useful to us, this one. The voltage at t equal to zero looks like this. The current at t equal to zero. All right, so then we need, one more time, this information and this information in order to get our unknown coefficients. Okay, and then just real quick, if you wanna have alpha equal omega, this would be critically damped. So then the solution for current would look something like this. Okay, and then again, we have these two unknown coefficients. Use the two initial conditions to write two equations, i at t equal to zero, and then di dt at t equal to zero. Right, then two equations, two unknowns. And then if alpha is less than omega, 
this would be under damped. So then the current would look something like this. Okay, where omega D is the damped natural frequency, which is like this. Okay, right, and then again, you have two unknown coefficients, use the two initial conditions to write two equations, solve for those two unknowns. Just like for a parallel RLC, right, it's analogous. Okay, so give some of these a try. Next, let's talk about the step response, so I'll see you on that video.